e minus 3 equals We're going to prove that e is less than or equal to 3. Why would we bother proving something so obvious? Well, partly because the title is good clickbait, but mainly because the proof is an interesting demonstration of some fun techniques in combinatorics. It's also just really neat that we can prove something about this transcendental number using only integers. But we'll get to that. First, we need to define e. The standard definition comes from studying compound interest, and is this limit. e is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. By looking at the terms of this sequence, we can conclude that the sequence converges and to a value less than or equal to 3. To prove this claim, we will show that 1, the sequence terms are bounded above by 3, and 2, that the sequence is monotonically increasing. You might wonder why we need that second point. Some functions like f of x is sine x are bounded, but never converge to any single value. If we can show that our sequence is both bounded and monotonic, then we know it converges. In other words, if this graph only goes up, but can't pass this line, we know it must converge to something no higher than that line. So we just have to prove these two claims. To do that, we're going to be using set injection. But I'll explain this in more detail later. Let's take a look at our first claim, that the sequence is bounded above by 3. The whole point of this video is to use counting arguments, so for this proof we want to work with integers. Let's rearrange this inequality a bit. Notice that we can make this into an integer inequality because all the terms of our sequence are rational. Okay, so how would we go about proving something like this inequality for all n? Well, there are lots of possibilities, but we're going to do it by building sets that have the same size as each side of our inequality, and then we'll compare those sets. We're going to construct a set of size n plus 1 to the n, and show that we can cut it up into three parts, each of which is smaller than or equal to another set of size n to the n. Importantly, the three sets on the left don't have to all be the same size, as long as each is smaller than the n to the n set on the right, we're in good shape. Let's take a moment to look at how we can compare set sizes. For example, to show that the set of fruit on the left is no bigger than the set of desserts on the right, we can create a mapping from fruits to desserts while making sure that each element remains distinct after the mapping. This is called an injection. Not every dessert has a corresponding fruit, but for the ones that do, we have a one-to-one -one relationship of fruit to dessert. We can prove that we have an injection by showing that every fruit maps to a dessert, and that given a dessert that was mapped to, we can figure out which fruit we started with. This in turn proves that the size of our fruit set is smaller than or equal to the size of our dessert set. Back to our inequality of interest. Here we have to show that each of our three left subsets can be separately injected into some set of size n to the n. What sets shall we choose? Well, n to the n is the number of ways of wiring a directed graph with n vertices where each vertex has one outgoing edge. But that's boring, so let's have a water balloon fight instead. Better yet, let's make them paint balloons so the colors are distinguishable. Now, n to the n counts the number of ways that n children can each throw one balloon at each other or themselves. The set of all such possible paint balloon fights is the target set we are trying to inject into. There are n children and n targets for each of them to aim at, so that's n to the n ways. n plus 1 to the n counts the same thing, except this time we'll add an adult that the kids can also choose to aim at. There are still n children, but now there are n plus 1 targets for them, for the desired total 
of n plus 1 to the n fight configurations. The partition into three subsets consists of cases where no kids target the adult, exactly one kid chooses to aim at the adult, and lastly, where multiple kids threw their balloons at the adult. So we just have to show that each of these subsets can be injected into the target set. Remember, that's the set of fights where there's no adult to aim at. Let's look at these cases one at a time. In the first, nobody aimed at the adult. This is already a valid fight in the target set, where there was no adult. So our map just takes every paint balloon fight to itself. This map, known as the identity, is definitely an injection. For the second case, exactly one child chose to throw at the adult. Our injection needs to map every possible fight where exactly one kid targets the adult to a fight where nobody aims at the adult, in such a way that we can reverse that mapping and recover the original fight. Let's name all the kids so we can tell them from each other, and call the kid who threw at the adult the rascal. Our map keeps most balloon throws the same, but we need to change who the rascal is aiming at. We'll need to be a bit clever about how we change the kid's targets. If we just have the rascal aim at an arbitrary kid, now we can't recover the original fight because we don't have a way to identify who the rascal was. So what's the solution? How can we make our reconfiguration reversible? Pause here and see if you can figure it out. The trick is to have Alice aim at the rascal, and have the rascal aim at Alice's original target. We now have a pattern where nobody aimed at the adult, but can we recover the original? Well, the rascal is whoever Alice is aiming at, and Alice's original target is whoever the newly discovered rascal is aiming at. Since we can reversibly map back to the original fight, where one child aimed at the adult, we have our injection. In the edge case where Alice is the rascal, after mapping, she aims at herself, and this is still reversible. After all, Alice's target, herself, is the rascal. For the final case, we're going to use the same basic argument. In this case, there are at least two rascals. Again, we need to change all the rascals' targets to aim at the kids instead of the adult. Can you think of a reversible way of doing this? For our injection, let's keep the kids ordered alphabetically and call the first rascal the leader. The rest we'll call the crew. We'll have Alice aim at the first crew member, with each crew member throwing to the next until the last one who aims back at the leader. Now we have the leader aim at whoever Alice originally aimed at. This may seem a bit complicated, but this pattern is carefully constructed so that we can recover the original balloon fight. The key is that the only crew member who's aiming to the left is the one aiming at the leader. So how do we recover the entire original configuration? Well, Whoever Alice is aiming at is the first crew member. From there, we follow forward the chain of throws to find the whole crew, until we find someone aiming to the left. Now we've identified the last crew member. Like we said, their target is the leader. We've now identified all of the original children who aimed at the adult. Finally, we can deduce Alice's original target by seeing who the leader aimed at. In the case where Alice was the leader, after the mapping, the rascals will all be aiming in one big loop, and it's totally reversible by the same procedure. So we have our injection. Let's recap. We partitioned the n plus 1 to the n set into three parts, and showed that each was injectable into the set of size n to the n. That means that each subset on the left is smaller than or equal to n to the n. We've now proven that the sequence is bounded above by 3. Now for our second claim, that the sequence is monotonically increasing. For this part of the proof, we're going to apply the binomial theorem. 
When y equals 1, the formula simplifies to this. A full explanation of this formula is outside the scope of this video, so we'll leave a link in the description with more information. But basically, in the formula, this n choose k term means the number of ways of choosing k objects from a set of size n. It's also equal to the coefficient on x to the k when you expand 1 plus x to the n. You can see that by choosing kx's from these n factors. Let's get back to what we're trying to prove. We want to show that this sequence is monotonically increasing, which means that each term is greater than or equal to the previous term. Let's expand both sides using the binomial theorem. Our strategy to prove this inequality consists of making a slightly stronger claim. Let's discard the final n plus 1 term from the right side and claim that even without that term, the left side is still no bigger than the right. Now that our two sums range over the same values of k, we can actually prove this inequality by showing it term by term. Let's rearrange so we're dealing with only integers again. A proof of this last inequality will suffice to show that the sequence is monotonically increasing. It's also an interesting inequality in its own right. We're going to prove it in the same way as before, by constructing a set for each side and showing that the left set can be injected into the right. Like before, we're going to have some paint balloon fights, but this time we only have k balloons, so not everyone is going to get one. Let's again have n kids and one adult handy. For our animation, we'll put the left-hand, smaller set on top. For the top set, this expression counts the number of ways we can choose k of the n children to receive balloons, and then have those kids throw their balloons at any target, including the adult. The fights counted by the bottom set are similar, except we are allowed to give the adult one of the balloons, but no one is allowed to aim at the adult. Now we have to come up with an injection from the top set to the bottom set. Again, the difference between the two sides of the inequality is that in the fights of the smaller set, the adult can never be given a balloon, and in the larger set, the adult is never hit with a balloon. So to transform a top case into a bottom one, we need to change the kid's throws so that the adult is never hit. If it helps with the transformation, we're allowed to give the adult a balloon, but importantly, the number of balloons must remain the same. Our solution is an extension of what we've already done, so pause here if you want to have a go. As before, we'll call the kids who aim at the adult rascals. Next, we look at the chains of throws that lead through the rascals to the adult, and we look at the kids on the ends of these chains. We know that none of these kids were hit by a balloon, because if they were, their chain would continue. From this subset of kids, we pick one arbitrarily. Let's go with the leftmost one. We'll call them the palette, because they're about to be splattered with a lot of paint. So the palette is the leftmost child who begins a chain of throws that eventually hits the adult. Now we're ready to build our injection. The first thing we have to do is have all the rascals change who they're aiming at, because in the target configuration, they aren't allowed to aim at the adult. We'll have them all aim at the pallet instead. Next, to help us recover who the pallet is when we reverse the mapping, we'll give the adult a balloon and have them aim at the pallet too. Now we have a problem though, because we're only allowed K balloons. So to keep the number of balloons the same, we take away the balloon from the rascal on the chain forward from the pallet. Now we have a fight where the adult is never hit. This is a valid bottom configuration, but can we recover the original pattern? Well, we know that the pallet is whoever the adult aims at. We also know that no one aimed at the pallet in the original fight, so everyone else aiming at them must have been a rascal. There was one more rascal in the original, the one at the end of the pallet chain. So take the adult's balloon and give it back to that rascal. 
This is our original balloon fight. The transformation was reversible, so we have an injection. There are a couple of edge cases it pays to inspect. If the pallet was a rascal, that's okay. Our transformation will end up with the adult and the other rascals aiming at someone who doesn't throw. This is still reversible by the same procedure. If the original balloon fight had no rascals, then our transformation won't work because we can't find a pallet. But no one is aiming at the adult, and the adult doesn't have a balloon, so it's already a valid configuration for both sides of our inequality. Our transformation can just leave it alone. This injection proves our inequality, and when we unwind all that algebra, it also shows that our sequence is monotonically increasing. We've shown that these terms are bounded above by 3 and increase monotonically, which means that the limit converges to some value e less than or equal to 3. We were able to prove this by finding sets with particular sizes, and then thinking carefully about how to inject them into other sets. This is a useful technique to have in your problem-solving toolbox. We probably could have used induction or algebra, but we're combinatoricists today. If you want to dig deeper into this problem, consider each of the injections we looked at and try to find the elements in the target set that don't have mappings back to the original set. If you can find any examples like that, you can make your inequality strict. If there aren't any such missed cases, you've demonstrated equality. This is called a bijection. Bijective proofs are far more common among proofs of counting identities but injective ones turn up every once in a while. If you want more problems like this, here are a few more theorems that can be proven using bijections or injections, ranging from tricky to fiendish. We might even tackle some of these in future videos.